If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rock star agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. Hello, everybody. My name is Tim Hollanden. I'm with EXP Realty and the Agents of Freedom, which is a sub-organization of a 3,000 agent organization at EXP called the Freedom Team. I'm here today with my good buddies, David Doran, Andy Hollis, and Aileen Fountain. Today, we thought we'd talk about what's on everybody's mind right now, and that's the NAR proposed settlement. Oh! <laughs> Already scared. <laughs> Isn't everybody scared of it? No, I don't think so. I'm not. But I'm, I'm in, anxious to hear y'all's thoughts. Uh, Aileen, let's start with you. What, uh, what are your thoughts? You want to start with me? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, first. I think that um, change is always scary. You know, I think that's, I think the, the unknown is what's scaring everybody because legitimately, like we still don't know. Nobody here knows actually how this plays out. At this point, it's not even settled yet. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> so it's all speculation in this conversation. But personally, um, I actually think that there is a scenario where realtors end up doing even better as a result of it. Um, I think <clears throat> I think the difference the difference maker is is just you know. How, how good of an agent are you? I mean, it's going to really expose, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. who, you know, either don't know what they're doing, don't have the work ethic, you know, there's, there's a, you know, and, and we've got a, a shifting market too. So, I mean, the timing is, is really uh, crucial because of where we are in the market and what, what's going on. So um, it will be very interesting to see how it plays out. Personally, I am not scared of the settlement. I think that there could be some, a number of pros that happens to it, a number of benefits. Unfortunately, I, I see some cons that are, that could very well result. Unfortunately, I see, um, some of the biggest cons that I actually am a little worried about is the very people that it seems like this settlement was supposed to help or geared towards helping is actually the very people that it's going to hurt, yep. you know, first time home buyers, um, <clears throat> people that, that have lower economic means that aren't going to be able to afford representation. Um, those are going to be the people that get hurt. I mean, and they say, well, oh, well, it's going to create all this competition and it's going to create, you know, basically people doing it for less money. And I just completely disagree with that. I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious that nobody in that lawsuit actually knows what we do right um or or how or how slim our margins already are i mean the average agent out there only makes forty thousand dollars a year and so now you want them to kind of somehow figure out how to cut that down even more and still you know make a living and still be able to go out and help people so i i unfortunately i i don't think that what's going to happen is what their intent was. I think it's going to hurt a segment of buyers who actually need us the most. And I think that's very unfortunate, but um, in a lot of other ways, as far as, as realtors who, you know, are really know what they're doing, intelligent can convey value, have the actual value to back it up with. I mean, those agents stand to, to make it big. I mean, to, to, to uh, actually benefit. Yeah, I agree. Any other thoughts? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with you. I mean, first off, I, I'm not scared of it at all. I mean, I think it's going to be a good thing. I mean, the 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 fact of the matter is, it's, it's really not going to be any different if you've been doing your job the whole time. You know, I mean, the, you know, it's basically saying that, you know, yeah, you have to get a buyer's representation signed. You have to get a buyer's agency and then, you know, they're saying, well, you know, buyers are gonna, not going to want to pay that or can't pay it or whatever. And I understand that. And where I, I see your point where the first time buyer, first time home buyer who basically spends all their money to buy the house in the first place, then 
<clears throat> you know, where are they left in this? But the fact is that the seller can still offer compensation. The sellers can. So the listing agents are the ones who really need to do their job and who need to convey the fact that in order for us to sell your house, you know, this is not required. But well, I think, here's what you I think the, mar need to do. the market will fix that. Yeah, I think so too. The market will fix that. Yeah. And I mean, so. No, I'm not scared of it either. I mean, I, I think there are some, I mean, you know, we talked about it this morning that, you know, I mean, you and I both, we've been in the business long enough, Tim, you have too, that, that you know, you remember when the whole Tiller Respa thing came out that it was like, oh my God, you know, how are we going to do business? How are we going to, now it's just a normal thing. It's just a normal way of life, you know? So I think eventually this will be the same way. I think there's some kinks they're going to have to work out for sure. Um, because I don't think they've thought this whole thing through the the entire way. Plus, when the DOJ gets involved in it, it's it's probably <laughs> going to even you know muddy up the waters even more than that. Yep. You know, so I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Plus, on the other side of that, there's mm -hmm. buyers lawsuits out there now. You know, so mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen with that. You know, so I mean, I think the thing is, if you just do your research and you and you do your job as a realtor, and like you said, you convey the fact of you know here's what I am, here's what who I am, what I do. And this is why I'm worthy of you paying me. Then it's it's all going to work itself out. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that, especially for agents like you and Aileen. You know, you're buyers because you have thousands of followers on your YouTube channel. They're already coming to you because they like you. They've gotten to know you over your channel. I don't see your all's business changing at all because I, I think they're still going to do. You know, you're a celebrity. By the time your phone rings and the buyer says, I'd love it if you oh. would consider representing me. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Um, I, I hear that all the time. You know, I have a channel. It's not to the level that you are at. You know, I'll have a little bit more difficulty. But but let's go back to um, something Aileen said. Um, I'll paraphrase. You, you feel sorry for the little guy. Yeah. The smaller agent, the less experienced agent, the agent's not been in the business, but six months or 12 months, you know. And I, they, feel, I feel sorry for the consumer as well, the smaller guy consumer. Oh, clearly. Because, yeah, you know, this, they're going to be lost in this process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The consumer, um, mm. <laughs> don't get me started on that, but <laughs> back to the, the agent, you know, is, is a six month agent going to be able to command the same percentage commission? or dollar fee commission or dollar per hour or whatever they decide to do as somebody like you and I's been in the business 20 plus years? I think Probably not. And I think they're that they're going to be able to try and they're going to be trying to think of like, how can I scrap? How can I, how can I stay in the game? How can I, you know, get this client over the next person? So, I mean, there will be, you know, some of that, I mean, but. That's one of my biggest fears is, and I'm going to be transparent here. I, I fear it becoming a whore's market, if you will. You know, the the person that goes out there and says, yeah, I'll, I'll write the contract for you and represent you for X and just try to beat everybody else out. You know, the problem is that agent is, is probably less experienced. The consumer is going to feel a lesser experience than they should have on the most important decision that they make in their life. You know, one of them, if they have bought multiple homes. Uh, that's my fear. Well, Zillow's already trying to do that, right? I mean, you know, yeah. they're, they've already come out and said, you know, we're going to do a 1% uh, buyer's agency straight across the board or whatever it is, or going to show you the first six houses for free. I mean, you know, we, we don't do any, you know, zero, 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 which, you know. I, I'm not concerned about that, Tim, and I'll tell you why. I mean, yes, this, this is why I say nobody knows how this is actually going to play out. Short term, you very well may be right. Long term, that's that you can't make a living that way. You're not going to survive. Right. So, so that pans out pretty quickly. Those people go out of business, like legit, go out of business. I mean, you know, the average commissions two and a half percent. I mean, like they that like that's the thing that this image with the DOJ and and all, and consumers, in fact, that think that we're just you know make all this crazy money and we don't really do anything for the money and all that. It's not reality. We know mm -hmm. reality because we've been digging trenches for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years here collectively at this this table. So the reality is that you can't put that kind of time and effort 
and get that little pay and stay in business and, and let alone say profitable, just stay in business. Mm -hmm. Agree. Uh, David, you know, one of the states you're licensed in Tennessee, they've already, they've been requiring buyer brokerage agreements all along, right? So what, how does this affect you? You know, I know you're licensed in Kentucky and Tennessee. Talk to that. I don't really think it's, I'm going to Aileen's comment of like, I think the inexperienced agent, this is going to be, this is going to, this is going to be very bad. An experienced agent, you're already negotiating a, a commission. You know, <clears throat> I know on my team, we negotiate commissions on every solitary transaction. Sure. And it's actually one of the things that I laugh about when an agent comes to me and goes, hey, you want to give me a discount? Give me 2%. Okay, so let's, let's talk about this. You want me to represent you and negotiate for against another experienced agent, and I can't even negotiate against the end user? You, you know, those are, they're not providing value. If the way that we're doing it, and I don't think there's one size fits all. I think there's, you're going to have to have a couple different sort of options, mm -hmm. you know, per the buyer. And, and then I think you're going to need, need to treat it a lot more like a listing presentation. I think you're going to need to have a presentation. I think you're going to need to provide your value. I think you're going to need to, to win that person over and, and show them how this could be a life-changing bad decision if you don't use an agent that will protect you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, th I think that's where it's going to go. I agree. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why I tell you that I'm not scared of it at all because of what you just mentioned, especially with us, with our YouTube channel, we convey so much value to yeah. the listing side and, and the buying side that, you know, here's what we'll do for you, you know, and, and it comes across that we're not, I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's even going to slow us down. I yeah. mean, like, yeah, I think you're right. So, and the agents just, that work with you are also going to be okay because you're teaching yeah. hundreds of agents every month how to build a YouTube channel, how to have a successful YouTube channel, how to have all of your leads coming in for free instead of paying these third-party sources for leads that are yep. have gone down to crap the last two and a half years, <laughs> roughly. Yeah, but that's the agent that I'd be the most worried about is the ones that really haven't been providing value. They've been getting their checkbook out and paying Zillow or those type of uh, people for leads. You know, they, they, they really were just spending to get the leads. I think those are going to be the agents that you're going to see pack up over the next six months. And I, I, mm -hmm. this is something that I don't hear other people talking about that I think is, is a point that's way missed in all of this um, is the fact that you already just just take the NAR thing out of it, right? Just the the cyclical nature of where we are in this market. You've got so many agents with one foot out the door already. So how many of them leave the business altogether? And then in that scenario, you now have a supply and demand issue. You have more consumers that need an agent than there are agents that can help them. Do you really think in that scenario that the price comes down on commissions? <laughs> no, it does if, not. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you only, there's only one of me. I can only help so many people in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year. Am I going to negotiate my commission down when there's more people that need my help than I can help? Or go back to the scenario of, you know, as, as realtors, you have a fiduciary responsibility to the listing side. When you're, when you're listing the property, your job is to protect them and get them the most money for their property. It's not to you know spoon feed a, a baby agent or an upper unrepresented you know client on that side. So the the question is, where do they put their fiduciary hat? You know, if they've got the listing, right. well, too yeah. bad, so sad. You, you know, and that's 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 where I see like especially some like issues. she just got her license in Florida. You you take a state like Florida where you can't have dual agency, so. You can't represent both sides. Well, and I'm not going to. Even, <laughs> no, yeah. But. You know, I, I'm not going to, unless, of course, if the buyer says, look, just handle handle the whole thing for me. I'll pay you whatever 2%, you know, which is is fine when you when you have both sides. All right, fine. I, I, I will, uh, under that scenario, do the proper disclosures, make sure my seller's okay with it and, and all that. But if you come to me unrepresented and you want me to, quote, represent you in any capacity, I'm not going to do that. I don't want that liability because right. I represent the seller. And I already know all the pitfalls that buyers can make. I'm not taking that liability because guess who gets sued when something goes wrong? 
that's where I think this is going to go. That's the only negative piece, oh, I think. It's a huge is negative. Is I think there's going to be a lot of lawsuits. Huge negative. Mm -hmm. That's something that hasn't been thought through. The reason why we have it the way that we have it, and it's pointless to even talk about now because it's all changing, was because of all the buyers getting unrepresented back in the day, 30 years ago. They had to make a change so that buyers could get representation. Mm -hmm. There, everything was ending in lawsuit. And we're going to go back to that same scenario, and you're going to have just a, a, a floodgate. It's, a, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, let's come back to whoever I forget which one of you two said it. Um, it's going to start with the listing agent. You know, I've I've yeah. primarily been a listing agent the last decade of my real estate career, and I started educating sellers about all the possible changes back in October when it was still possible. Um, and listing agents, those of you that are watching this right now, I mean, you're, you're going to have to have that conversation with your sellers saying that, you know, my fee is X and it's negotiable. I have a menu of commissions. Here's what I'll do for this. Here's what I do for this. Here's what, you know, and so forth. But I also think it's in your best interest to offer a commission to the buyer's agent. And, and here's why, you know, here's the last 15 properties that sold in your neighborhood, you know, 14 of them or whatever the number is had a buyer agent uh, commission paid by the seller. Now we can't advertise that according to the proposed settlement in the MLS, but we can advertise it when we talk to the buyer's agent. So that this is a, kind of a two part topic. So first of all, listing agent needs to do a job with the seller um, showing them that, you know, Offering a buyer agent commission is going to make you more attractive because more buyers agents are going to uh, create bidding wars like we have been through since COVID. I mean, still still going through it to some extent. You know, I had a seller that was up on this topic and he, he dug right in immediately, said, no, I'm absolutely not going to offer a buyer commission. So that's fine. That's your prerogative. It's negotiable. We want, we'll put a zero in the field in the MLS because our, our MLS is still have the cooperating percentages in there house is beautiful on a lot of land got a lot to offer two showings in 120 days roughly um, wow when we got our first offer the buyer wrote by our agent wrote into the contract to the seller you have to pay me x percent in the buyer representation side he agreed to it like that fast and we haven't worked that deal out yet. He did agree to it. And I said, okay, now that you've agreed to it, let's amend the listing contract while we still can and put X percent in the co-op percentage in the MLS, which he also agreed to. To try and drive some more traffic. Yeah. yeah. And now traffic's picking up. But the, the second thing I wanted to come back to is – what I think is terrible, since we don't know if we can get paid as a buyer's agent or not when we show a listing, and they can't advertise it in any way associated with an MLS. Now, at eXp, we can because we have our own internal system with all of our listings in the entire world on it. Uh, so we'll be legally able to um, advertise it internally. But as a buyer's agent, if I'm to show seven houses today, I have to call seven listing agents and say, hey, is your seller agreed to paying any sort of buyer agent commission? I'm going to stop you right there, Tim, because the hysterical part is that you just said, I have to talk to the listing agent. Yeah. And they don't even answer their phone. <laughs> I mean, <Okay>. yep. <laughs> that that's the funny part. <clears throat> it so, is. Yeah. So, so now our workload, and this will play out as time goes on, mm -hmm. but the buyer's agent will will realize my workload just increased tenfold so the because listing. I've so got to the get listing a hold of the yeah. They're going to realize they have to answer their phone seven times right. for every agent that wants to show all But of they their... don't answer their phone now. No. Yeah. But the other thing is before you make that call, you have to get a, a buyer's agency agreement with a commission agreement on there before you make that call. Yeah. You can't make the call, then come back and say, well, they're not paying me anything, so you got to pay me 3%. You got to have it done before you show the property before you ever make that phone call. It's it's a lot more work, <laughs> yeah. and it's the same thing. We've been negotiating this. It's 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 like we already did it. Yeah. Well, yeah. and to our buyer agent viewers out there, I mean, you're going to have to negotiate that fee with your buyer up front, put it in writing in the agreement, and you're going to also have to say either verbally or in writing, we will we will do our darndest 
to ask the seller to pay that fee so you don't have to come out of pocket right. for my right. fee. Right, right. And Again, it goes why you're going to gonna need somebody who can negotiate well. Yeah. So when we talk about the little guy or the inexperienced guy, I think it's it's best to define that as the person that's not able to articulate their value to their buyer client. That could be an experienced agent. Well, it and, could be. And, and it goes beyond that. Like I just said, I mean, not only do you have to articulate that value to your client, but you have got to be good at negotiating because you're about to go. Not only are you going to battle the listing agent about trying to get your client the best deal. Now you got to battle for your commission, too. Yeah, which is with the seller, yeah, indirectly, indirectly, exactly. <laughs> and so you know, it, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how it plays yep. out. But I, I just go back to my original point: it is clear that nobody involved in this lawsuit knows what we actually do. Yeah, well, I'm going to go back and and unless somebody has something else to say, I'll, I'll make the comment and then I'll ask for any final comments and then we'll move on. But. I'm going to go back to what I told you, Aileen, in October. I said, you know, there's trillions of dollars worth of real estate that's going to sell every year, no matter what. Regardless. People have babies. People get married. People get divorced. People die. New jobs. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People, yeah, transplant from one location to another. Um, there's going to be fewer of us doing the same amount of business. Mm -hmm. So Correct. the cream will rise. The, uh, the agents that are not capable of articulating their value will fall. And we'll be okay. That's my opinion. I don't think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to, the, I think yeah. the good agents are going to be overwhelmed. I, I think triple digit growth is, is, I think a lot of agents that we're friends with, that we, we work with on a daily basis, that they're going to go through. The I don't know how to quantify it at this point, and, but like I said, I, I think that there's a scenario where the good agents are overwhelmed. Let me talk, well, let me ask one question, you know, mm -hmm. what we were just talking about. So, because I don't know that everybody's clear on this because I don't know that I'm clear on this. Um, <laughs> well, I hope I can answer your question. <laughs> I hope so too. I think you can since you are the godfather. The godfather. <laughs> but the, so within EXP, we are allowed within our system mm -hmm. to put the listing out there, let mm -hmm. people know that we have a property for sale. Here it is, blah, blah, blah. And we can state what we are offering the buyer's agency for the other side mm -hmm. within EXP. Correct. Now, is that possible with a Keller Williams or a Remax or a uh, uh, a, a Compass or a or any of those? I guess it is. The, the difference is everybody you just named there is a franchise, so they're all independently owned and operated. So we're talking about their, so they can't their office. It. They can't do it globally like we can. No, right. So they can only do it within their office. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Unless they wanted to build something that was a little more national or or global. Wouldn't that be the MLS? I'll be honest with you. I wasn't clear on that. Because, I mean, I really thought maybe they could do it. We're since literally going to go back to the, the days where you had a listing book in your office with, like, printed sheets. Yeah. <laughs> you flip through. But I thought if it was Remax, it was Remax, it was Remax, it was Remax. No, those are all no. separate companies. Okay. Huh. They're just renting the name. They're all independently okay. owned. Well, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. Any other final comments? Nope. I, I, I just tell agents to, to not be scared. If, if you if you do your research and lean into it, like right now is an opportunity to make a lot of money. Hey, you, here you, is one other question. You do com primarily commercial, or not primarily, but you do a lot of commercial. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to get a buyer's agency signed in a commercial. Uh, that that field will be no. unaffected. That's unaffected. what I thought. Okay. Yep. I wasn't clear on that either, but I thought that's what it was. Yep. So. Okay. Hey, I just say hey. lean into it right now. Yes, it's I agree. Opportunities. That's good advice. Anybody else? Mm, not All on right. this. That's a wrap, guys. <laughs> Thanks for being here today. <laughs>